Hi everyone, it's Robert Blanchard, your Region 1 Sentinel. And I'm Hannah Fisher, your Region 1 Secretary. And today we're going to learn about interview skills. Hannah, what do you know about interview skills? Well, Bob, I don't know much. What can you tell me? Yeah, well today we're going to talk about your application, your resume, um, your interview, and nowadays it could be via Zoom, phone, or in person, so we're going to cover all three. And then the follow-up and the thank you note. So let's get started. The first step in trying to get a job is writing a cover letter. This is sometimes also called your letter of application. This should be no more than one page and it should include what job you're applying for, your name, your address, your phone number, and why you think you'd be a good fit at that company. Have you ever written a cover letter, Hannah? I have. What's some advice that you would have for... Um, I would make sure you pick an appropriate font, one that doesn't show off um, as too unprofessional. Make sure that your font's not too big and it's not too distracting. Times New Roman 12 point is always a good go-to if you don't know what font to use. And it always looks business professional when you're using that. Next up, Hannah, we can talk about resumes. So, a good resume should be no more than one page and it should highlight everything, all the accomplishments and all the work experience that you've had up to this point in your life. And it might seem like a daunting task to get all that written down, but a good thing to do is to start now when we're in middle school and high school. So when we move on to later in our professional careers, we'll already have that all there, ready to go. Up top, we have our objective. Our objective is the job you want to apply for. And as right below that, we have our work experience. Um, I've included my previous three work experiences here. Um, and three is usually about the number you want to hit. And you want to go back as far as you can because employers like to see that you have a history of working and not job hopping. So Hannah, if I worked at um, Mark's Fleet Supply for one week before I quit, would I want to put that on my resume? Probably not, Bob. That shows that you're not committed to your job and that you have a tendency to leave before your full potential is in reach. Exactly. But now if I worked at um, the high school as a janitor or a high school as the basketball coach for five years, would I want to put that on my resume? Of course. Okay, so right below that we put our education and our accomplishments. So our education, if we're still in high school, we just put the year we're expected to graduate. And then below that is our accomplishments. This is any notable accomplishments or awards that you've received in your lifetime. And this is things such as if you get um, on a honor roll at school, or if you win a contest at FFA. Something that would not be smart to put on here would be your kindergarten graduation. <laughs> that would not be smart to put on. After your achievements, you want to put your extracurricular activities, any of them that you might be in, FFA would be a huge one to put on there. And lastly, I have on there leadership training. If you don't have any leadership training, one thing you could do instead is to put um, skills that you've acquired. Like if you know how to use Microsoft PowerPoint or what are some other skills? Excel. Yeah, Excel or Google Sheets. All right, Hannah, next we should talk about interview questions. What do you think is the hardest interview question that you can be asked? Um, I think the hardest one that I've ever been asked was what is my biggest weakness? What would your weakness be? Um, I think my biggest weakness would be time management because you have so much stuff to do within a day that you need to figure out when and how is a good time to accomplish it. And this is where your employer is really looking for honesty. They're not looking for someone who can just tell them what they wanna hear. They want to hear someone who's going to be honest about what they say. Another question that I think is really hard is tell me about yourself. It's such an open-ended question. Um, some things I like to go to is I just tell them about my name, um, what school I'm going to currently, some of my extracurriculars. How about you, Hannah? I think including your future plans can be really important because it can let your employer know whether or not you're committed to the job or whether or not it's just something to pay the bills which can definitely affect your employability to them. Nowadays, interviews can be on Zoom, in person, or even on the phone. One thing about a phone interview is always make sure you're in a quiet location so you don't have a lot of noise going on in the background. Any tips, Hannah, for a phone interview? Um, make sure that you're in a place in which you have good connection because breaking off from the phone or cutting out can really show them that you're not um, stable Yeah. in your 
work. Um, a, one good thing for Zoom is always make sure you have a neutral background. Um, you don't want to show, you don't want to be laying in bed either. You want to look presentable. You want to conduct how you would in person, but rather it's just um, over the internet. Over the internet. Yeah. And lastly, in person. Nowadays, handshaking may be frowned upon. So just kind of feel it out when you get there. If the employer reaches to shake your hand, feel more than comfortable to say, I'd rather not due to the COVID. Um, another thing is always wear your mask when you're going to an interview. A lot of employers won't even let you in the building if you don't have a mask. So you're all done with your interview. It went great. You really liked the employer. They really liked you. What do you do next, Tana? Well, you should probably send a thank you note. Yes, thank you notes are very important when it comes to interviewing. It can set you apart from the other candidates and make them notice you. All you have to really put in it is just thank you for the interview today and say your name and maybe even highlight some of the things you've talked about. Say, I really like to see that your company is offering um, green initiatives to give back to the environment. And then just sign your name and say thank you for contacting me. If you have any questions, feel free. So now you're all done with your interview. You're all done with your thank you note and everything. It's been about a week. You haven't heard from them. What should we do, Hannah? I think maybe trying to follow up with them would be a good idea. Usually wait at least a week if you haven't heard from them. And some things you can say are, hello employer, um, I, I was in for an interview last week. I was just checking in on how the interview process is going and if you need anything else from me. Make it sound like you're trying to help them rather than asking where you are in the process. Thinking about how you're going to dress and how you're going to prepare for your interview. One rule of thumb that I like to use is always dress up one level from the type of job you're trying to get. So if you're getting a job as a stock person at a store um, and it's just casual attire, always wear at least a collared shirt and slacks. Um, Hannah, what should I wear if I'm dressing for an office job where it's business attire? For females, either dress pants or skirts. If you're going to wear a skirt, make sure you have either pantyhose or leggings underneath to remain modest and also show them that you're professional. Um, make sure you have uh, clean hygiene, that you smell good, that your breath doesn't stink, that you have brushed hair, don't come in with wet hair, that's very unprofessional. Um, no hats, make sure that you have a mask, of course, in these times, that it's a well-fitting mask. Um, how should boys go about doing this, Bob? Yeah, it's a lot of the same things. Um, like I said, you dress up one level from the job you're trying to get. Always wear at least slacks and a collared shirt, no matter where you go. And a lot of times, if you're looking to go into a professional environment, definitely wear a full suit. Um, it'll really set you apart from the other candidates and it'll show the employer that you're taking this interview seriously. Um, also with the good hygiene, make sure you smell nice. What should men do about their facial hair and their hair? You should always be clean shaven if you're looking for a job, especially if you're working in with food service. They always want to see you clean shaven. And always try and get a haircut a few days before so you don't look all, so you don't look rough around the edges. So you look very polished and professional. All right, Region 1, thanks for tuning into our video today. I hope you've enjoyed our video series. And I think we have a couple more coming up. Yeah, definitely.